During that intro, you might have noticed that on the grass, this yellow and black snake wasn't exactly moving. It was moving, but it wasn't really going forwards or backwards at all, just kind of slithering in the exact same spot. Compared to when it was on the wooden board, it went in a clear path straight forward. What was the reason for this? Well, it's twofold. First is the degrees of freedom, and the second is scales. Let me go inside and explain. To understand why the snake didn't really move that well on the grass, but excelled on the wooden board, we should first look at how real snakes move. There are two primary methods that snakes use to move around in the real world. First of all, they have a much larger range of motion as opposed to my snake, which only has 10 motors, allowing for 10 degrees of freedom. With many small muscles, the snake's able to contract and expand various locations so that only certain points of the snake's body is in contact with the ground at certain times. This allows it to push itself forward. Second of all is the scales on the snake. Scales are shaped in such a way that it allows for easier forward motion, but restricts the motion to the side and backwards. For a clear demonstration of this, look at this video of when researchers put a snake inside a fabric sleeve, effectively removing the ability for the snake to use its scales. It slithers around just like my snake does on the grass, without moving forwards or backwards. This is because without directional friction, the forces just cancel out and it stays stationary. Noticing this, I began researching artificial scales and came across this research done at Harvard University. They've created a soft robotic snake that's actuated by air. As air is pumped in and out, the scales lift up and down, propelling the snake in a forwards direction. I tried recreating my own artificial scales using a 3D printer. These passive scales don't move at all. I shape them as rounded trapezoids, with directional friction, minimizing it in the forwards direction, but increasing it on the backwards and side to sides motion. To test this, I looked for an appropriate surface. Something like wood or marble wasn't really ideal because there's nothing that the scales could really latch onto. So that's why I tried using it on carpet instead. My idea was that the scales would kind of act like Velcro on the carpet, hook and loops where the scales would lock onto the carpet hairs. Unfortunately, as you can see from this clip, it had minimal effect. And so we're back to the same situation as on the grass. While it's not entirely faithful to real snakes, I wondered what would happen if I introduced wheels instead of scales. Wheels are similar in an analogous kind of way in that they allow easy forward direction and they restrict the side-to-side -side motion. Wheels just don't spin in that direction. And so I attach these to the base of the snake, and as you can see now, this proves successful. So I've talked a little bit about how the snake moves forward, but how can you make this at home? Well, I've put all the STL files ready for 3D printing online, so you can just download them. A little later on, I'm going to talk about how my second snake, the white one, is able to move in a helical pattern by rotating each motor by 90 degrees. But first, let's look at how I actually built the snakes to begin with. The only difference between the white snake and the yellow and black snake is how the servos are orientated. In the yellow snake, all the servos are aligned along a singular axis. In the white snake, each segment has its servo rotated 90 degrees relative to the previous segment. To support the top of the servo that rotates around, I decided to reprint the base of the servo case, this time with an extra knob on the end that a ball bearing can slip over. If there was one good thing that came out of the fidget spinner craze, it was that for a brief period of time it was incredibly easy to buy cheap, low quality ball bearings. To wire the robotic snake together, simply solder all 10 servos in parallel to each other and then run 10 individual signal lines to the head of the snake where the Arduino Nano is located. I decided to throw in a capacitor over the power lines as well. This is because when you start up the servo, it can draw a spike of current that can reset the Arduino Nano. I was hoping to demonstrate the snake slithering along outside like I did with the other shots. 
Unfortunately, it's just started to rain outside, so it looks like I'm gonna be stuck in here for a little bit. To generate the slithering motion, I've used a simple sine wave. Looking at the code, it's all enclosed in this 1-4 loop. Because each servo motor is a little bit further along the curve than the previous one, we need to include a shifting function. I've created the variable called shift for this, and it's equal to 2 times pi over the total number of servos, which in this case is 10. There are several variables that can be altered. These are the amplitude, the speed, and the number of wavelengths. I personally found that for 10 motors, after about one and a half or two wavelengths, the change in angle wasn't that significant and the snake more closely resembled a straight line. Finally, we can also change the offset variable. The offset will determine if we want to turn left or right. So the inchworm motion is inspired by worms in that certain sections of the snake contract and expand at different points. Uh, so I've tried implementing this in the snake and you can see the results here. So as you may have noticed, I never really got the inchworm properly moving forward. It does technically go forward, but at a ridiculously slow pace that I actually had to do a time lapse to actually demonstrate it moving forward. Um, I think the biggest issue with that is the lack of directional friction in that no particular side is favored. And so when it's inching along, the forces on both sides kind of cancel out. Um, so I think the solution to that might be looking into various types of like artificial scales like I was discussing earlier. Uh, but if you have any other ideas of how I could resolve this issue, please leave a comment in the, in the comment section down below. The Sidewinder snake is a unique type of snake that slithers sideways instead of going forwards. Research has shown that this motion is achieved through lifting certain parts of the snake in a periodic manner. This is impossible to recreate using the yellow and black snake. However, the white snake is able to move in two planes, the horizontal and vertical. By sending a sine wave through both the vertical and horizontal plane, this motion can be reproduced. It's clearly not as fluid as the real snake, however, it does successfully reproduce the motion. A snake with more motors would be a lot smoother in its sideways rotation. For fun, I also decided to introduce a striking motion. For future builds, I might introduce a proximity sensor that detects when a person gets too close and the snake will strike out. So you're probably wondering why I've got this massive power supply tethered to the robotic snake. Uh, and the reason for that is really the current draw required for these servos. I initially tried using a simple AC to DC wall socket supply which gave about 5 volts at 2 amps. However, when you look at the data sheet for these servos online, you can see that the operating current draw is around 600 to 900 milliamps and then the stall current is about 2.5 amps. Because we've wired the servos in parallel, basically each servo is getting 5 volts but we then need to add up the current. So for 10 motors operating at 900 milliamps, that's basically 9 amps of current draw. Uh, if all 10 servos were to stall at the exact same time, we'd be drawing around 25 amps of current, which is highly unlikely. But either way, that small little 2 amp, 5 volt power supply is really insufficient. So instead what I did was I modified the uh, ATX power supply from just an everyday computer. You basically any old like desktop computer has these in them and this one's capable of providing 5 volts at 20 amps. I'm not really going to go over the modification process for this because it's been documented a lot and there's a lot of great online tutorials for it so instead I'll just link to some of those tutorials in the description down below. Another option for power would to be just to cut this tether cable and instead have uh, onboard lithium-ion batteries around 7.4 volts. 
Unfortunately, I just don't really have the budget for that right now, and I did have a lot of these power supplies just lying around, so I opted for that instead. Okay, so that's about it for this video. However, there's a bit more I want to do with this project. The reason I actually started this project was to recreate this research video. The snake winds around the tree and then rolls itself up. I was hoping to be able to do it with this snake that has 10 degrees of freedom. Unfortunately, when I recreated this helical spiral with this snake, I found that it wasn't actually a long enough snake to wrap around the tree or pipe entirely. I think I'm going to go back to the drawing board and create a more compact design for this and then make a new video if I successfully get it climbing up the tree. A couple other improvements that I want to make is the removal of this box and instead place some LiPo batteries inside the snake so that it's no longer connected to this tether. Additionally, I think it might be interesting if I put a camera in the front of this snake, or alternatively, I could put in some distance sensors so that when your hand becomes too close to the snake, it attacks like a cobra. And finally, perhaps a bit further down the line, I'd like to create an electronic eel. If those sound like interesting projects and you wanna follow along, be sure to subscribe. In the meantime, I'll be posting more regularly to my Instagram account where you can follow along with the projects as they're being developed. Um, I think that's about it. So thanks for watching.